Um, awesome. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being here. My name is Nick Nelly. Uh, as you can see, I'm a senior solution engineer at Devo. Um, I was not told when I agreed to do this that the next set of speakers would be the CISO of the Pentagon and other equally impressive titles. Um, but as you may have seen in my bio, my career before kind of moving into software was I was a middle school math teacher for five years. And so having taught 13-year-old boys math, uh, there's nothing that you can do that will phase me at this point. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I'm here to talk about everyone's favorite thing, which is AI, uh, but hopefully to uh, alleviate some of the concerns around it and speak to it in a way that will actually add value. Uh, but focused on you know, the future of AI and, and threat investigation and how that can help kind of level up the SOC, the analyst, to um, working more efficiently, more productively, and, and kind of focusing on those higher value tasks. So agenda for this, and, and it'll be quick, and then I'll have a quick live demo. I think that always is more interesting than me speaking to slides. Um, but a quick touch on probably things that everyone in this room knows, right? Current challenges facing the SOC, facing the analyst, um, preventing them from doing their jobs or at least enjoying doing their jobs as much as they should. Um, we'll talk about what we at Devo call kind of this journey to the autonomous SOC, um, which is kind of this vision of moving towards leveraging AI, leveraging automation within the SOC. Um, we'll look at a platform that we have called DeepTrace, which is really focused on this idea of autonomous threat investigations. Um, and then I'll do a quick live demo scenario and kind of show you guys what that looks like. So <clears throat> starting with the current challenges facing the SOC, and you know, I think the first is probably the most obvious is over the last several years, there's just been a massive explosion of data. Um, as we've had more and more kind of smart connected devices, as we've had more and more kind of remote work and, and work from home, um, we're just faced with this constantly expanding attack surface, right? There's just tons more data to deal with um, than there ever has been before. And it's important that we always bring all of that data in because you need that holistic view. Um, you need to be able to see into everything to understand where those threats, where those incidents might be. Um, and quite frankly, this, this massive data volume is now just really providing a, a, a great kind of breeding grounds for, for you know, malicious actors because it's prevent, providing this method of concealing those attacks, those, those threats. On the flip side of that, the analysts that are dealing with this are just simply overwhelmed. They're overloaded. Um, there's too much data. This data is firing thousands upon thousands of alerts every day. Uh, it's very difficult for an analyst to come in and understand what are the important alerts, what are the important events, where do they prioritize and focus their time. Um, and this is, of course, leading to you know, analyst burnout. I think you can see in a, in a study we did last year, only 28% of security professionals think their SOC is working effectively. Um, I think the number in that same study of analysts that have considered leaving that job or leaving the career altogether was above 60%. Um, so this is not great working conditions for these people. And you know, because of that, you're getting things like slow response time, slow time to detect, slow time to remediate. Um, and then on top of that, because there's so much of this reactive work being done, uh, it's almost impossible for analysts and SOX right now to have the capacity to do more proactive threat hunting, more proactive work to improve their security posture because they're constantly trying to swim through all of these events, all of these alerts, and put out fires. So, you know, <clears throat> to provide kind of a, a nice visual example here, because I do work alongside marketing and they like this, um, you know, what's really the challenge right now is to help an analyst kind of get from this, right, tons of data from the network, from their endpoints, from their applications, from their smart refrigerators, whatever it might be, um, but help them focus and understand and find what's important, right? Find that accurate and actionable data. Where are those indicators of compromise? Where are those potential threats? Where are those events that are actually important for them to be spending their time investigating, gathering additional context, evidence, whatever it might be? But the reality is this is really only a portion of the challenge and where we need to get analysts to, because it's not enough to just focus on those individual events, right? And the state of the, the SOC right now is we've got billions upon billions of data events of logs being created every day. Um, and at this point, most enterprises have, you know, through a SIM or a variety of SIMs or this, that, and the other thing, they're at a point where they've got detection logic set up to fire those alerts, right? Trigger those alerts. But the volume of those alerts is still in the thousands. And the challenge with those alerts is they're often triggered on a single event. Very rarely is an actual attack, an actual threat, a single event. It's a sequence of events. It's a series of correlated actions, often over a long period of time. And so the analysts now having to go through tens of thousands of these alerts and figure out, OK, what's a false positive? 
What was a, a low priority, a, an alert that's just this, this machine's standard behavior? I don't need to investigate this. How did they then shift their focus from billions of events to thousands of alerts and to most importantly, tens of real incidents or attacks, right? Something that has that context, that has strung together all of those individual events into something that an analyst can take action on. And so really where we're looking at when we talk about AI and this autonomous threat investigation and how to leverage automation, it's how do we move the SOC, move analysts further down this funnel? How do we get them from shifting their focus from individual events, individual actions to a more complete attack story with that full context? And so what would help? Um, <clears throat> you know, again, the buzzword, AI, right? How do we help an analyst kind of replicate what their thought process is in a very controlled AI machine learning fashion, right? How do we augment that analyst, give them that scalability, that speed, that productivity that humans can't do alone? Okay, we can't go out and hire 10,000 more analysts to react to the thousands of alerts that we have. But we can leverage AI in the right fashion to start scaling that expertise. How do we then leverage automation to start going out there and, and automating some of that routine evidence gathering, context gathering, correlation that analysts are having to do? How do we start autonomously piecing together those portions of the attack chain into a complete story? And then once we handle that, once we start scaling up what we're able to do from the reactive side, then we can move towards automation of proactive you know, behavior. How do we then proactively kick off new hunts, new threat investigations that we can then convert into cases more proactively? And so this kind of comes into what we at Devo have kind of coined this journey to the autonomous SOC, right? And this, this is all about augmenting the analysts within a SOC with AI and automation. Um, I think one of the things that struck me, I was at Black Hat DEF CON last year, and I had the, the fortune or misfortune of attending a session that was on AI. And I'll spare you a lot of the, uh, the vulgarity and the words that were used from the SOC analysts in terms of AI, but there were some fingers shown, and there's a lot of misinformation around what the goal of AI is. I think it was probably Will Smith and iRobot and his fault. Um, but you know, our view of AI is not to replace the human analyst, but to augment them, right? How do we have this human plus machine collaboration that takes the SOC to the next level? Um, and so at Devo, we view this idea of the autonomous SOC, the augmented analyst, as really being composed of, of three key pillars. All right, the first is on the data side, right? You have to have a, a ideally a single SIM solution, a single pane of glass that has the scale um, to bring in all of your data into one single spot. Give you that complete, holistic, comprehensive view of your data so they've eliminated your blind spots and that's what's gonna set you up for then the automation and the AI to do that context gathering to help move that analyst along. Once you have the data in, then it's about analytics. How do we leverage AI to do some of that advanced analytics, both on the detection side, AI is capable of detecting things like behavioral changes, anomaly detection in a machine's behavior, a peer group's behavior, whatever it might be. Um, that AI can also start detecting you know, the ever-increasing complexity of, of threats. Um, so being able to leverage AI from a detection standpoint and analytics standpoint, but then also being able to kick off automations when an alert fires, when an event happens to build out those attack stories, do that autonomous investigation. And then the third pillar is what we're calling community, right? How do we go into an enterprise and expand their expertise beyond the four walls of that enterprise, of that SOC? How do we give them easy access to industry expertise, to best practices, to security content that's not just gonna be, hey, we've got 800 alerts, but gonna be providing real value. It's gonna be up to date with the most common indicators of compromised threat types, things like that. And so <clears throat> when we talk about augmenting analysts, you know, it's again, it's about leveraging AI, leveraging automation, to take an analyst to a level they're unable to do just with human manpower. Um, so leveraging AI to perform complex alert investigations at a speed and a scale that humans are unable to do. Um, using automation to take all of those routine remedial tasks off the analyst plate, um, to go out and gather context, to look for other alerts that have fired on the same machine. You know, these are very basic commands and things that a machine can do tens of thousands of times a day that humans just can't do. So if we can remove that from the analyst plate, we can still give them all of that context in an automated fashion, we're gonna free up analysts to be able to focus on more high value activities, on actually responding, on being more proactive. Which then of course seamlessly leads into the third option here, which is that proactive threat hunting, right? Take away all of that remedial task, take away all of that reactive behavior, let them focus on more of the proactive threat hunting. 
And so now I'll kind of shift to how we do this at Devo and, and introduce you guys to a product that we call Deep Trace. And so I won't give you the full kind of who Devo is because I'm not a sales guy. They are here. You can talk to them later. Um, but really what Devo is, it's all about being able to bring all of your data into a single location, being able to scale your data ingest, and then being able to leverage all of those power, powerful security acronyms, SOAR and UABA and NDR, EDR, there's too many DRs for me to keep track of. I haven't caught up yet. Um, but most importantly, what we'll be focusing on today is one of our applications of, of AI and automation, which is this idea of autonomous threat hunts, autonomous investigations. Uh, and so we do this through a platform that we call DeepTrace. And the way that DeepTrace works is that it will take an alert, a single event, and when that triggers and kicks off into the DeepTrace platform, it will run that single event through, in essence, a series of thousands of AI-generated questions. You can think of this as a massive decision tree. And the purpose of those questions is to be able to then go out and find all of the other evidence, all of the other context, all of the other correlated actions around that alert <clears throat> to start automatically building out that full attack story, excuse me, that full attack trace. Um, so what then is going to happen is that an analyst, instead of coming in and viewing that single activity and then having to go back and look through billions of events or thousands of alerts, they're going to be greeted from the get-go with more context. They're going to be a little closer to the finish line when they start. So they're still going to be the ones going in, driving the action, taking control, but they're going to be a little bit further along in that path. And so when we think about kind of alerts and investigations and attack chains at Devo, you know, we kind of use the MITRE attack matrix as our, our groundwork. We map everything back to that. And so if you can think about what DeepTrace does behind the scenes, and then we'll kind of shift to a demo, um, is it might take a single alert. In this case, maybe there was an alert that happened that, you know, is mapped to this hijack, I can't even read it, execution flow, right? Single event, we've mapped it back to the MITRE attack framework. But this event could be the start of an attack chain, it could be the end, it could be somewhere in the middle. And what DeepTrace is going to do through that series of questions is it's going to go out and build out that full map. So that we're going to get this full kind of timeline view, again mapped against the MITRE attack framework with that full context of exactly how this attack has played out in our environment. Um, so again, the goal of this idea of the autonomous SOC, the augmented analyst, is to again remove some of that routine effort from the analyst plate, help them work more efficiently, help them be more productive because instead of being able to address maybe 10 investigations, 100 alerts a day, now we're moving to thousands of investigations. AI is asking millions of questions of the data. Um, we've got that attack chain built out instead of an analyst having to go through and, and piece by piece put that together. Um, we can focus on response and remediation instead of data gathering. Um, we've got the scalability and again kind of that bottom line I think is the most important is we're going to start decreasing that mean time to detect, that mean time to respond. So I'll shift from that and we'll kind of go into a scenario and a demo here. And so um, to set the stage for you guys, I want you to imagine that I work for this Scoville, Scoville company, an up and coming chili manufacturer. Um, this was designed in the fall. We all had chili on our mind. I know it doesn't play as much right now, but that's who we are, right? We're an up and coming, big disruptor in the chili space. Um, I'm a security analyst who's just had a case added to my queue. Um, and behind the scenes, I'm leveraging kind of the full Devo product suite. Um, so at a high level, I've got all my enterprise technology feeding all of those events uh, in real time into the Devo SIM platform, which is serving as that single kind of pane of glass, single repository to all my enterprise data. That's where all my detection logic, both the traditional kind of if then, as well as the machine learning AI based detections are, are firing. And as those alerts fire, they're kicked off to both Devo Deep Trace for that autonomous investigation, as well as to Devo SOAR, which does some additional correlation, also has those automated playbooks, and in this case is where we're going to have kind of our case management piece. So the attack in this scenario is kind of already played out, and here's what you can kind of see, and we'll kind of hit on this as we go through the demo. Um, we've had a, a, you know, bad actor kind of connect into our environment, um, and unfortunately they've got this poor victim, J court int, very easy to say, um, to execute this double extension file, right? This file, malicious code, um, that has now gotten into our network, and as we can see, um, leveraged its admin access to discover other devices. It moved laterally throughout our network until it found our secure file server. Within our file secure, you know, it found, again, our, our chili holy grail, that secret recipe file that everyone's been after, uh, and they were able to exfiltrate that out of the network. Um, so here again, you can see this is where we are. Um, and so now what I'll do now is pivot over to the Devo platform and kind of look at what this looks like from the analyst perspective. Um, and there's like an 80% chance that I've been timed out. We'll have to log back in, so hopefully no one sees my passwords. 
Um, but we'll jump in here. So here we can see I'm lovely Nick Nelly, SOC analyst, kind of logging in. And I can see that today, June 1st, I think that's today, um, I've had this case added to my queue. High criticality. I can see things like the user, um, the file server that I know is the important one. Um, and I can see here another kind of piece of automation that we've got built at, at the Devo, in the Devo platform. And so what's actually gone on here from the Devo SOAR perspective is that a single alert has fired and what Devo SOAR, kind of our you know, automated response, we have playbooks built in to do, is actually gone out and automatically gone and grabbed other correlated alerts. Um, so other alerts that have fired on the same IP addresses, the same machines, the same usernames, and it's gone and gathered that automatically, correlated it into this single case. And it's also extracted some of this important information. So again, that you know, me as the analyst, when I first log in, I'm not having to gather this, right? Some of this context is presented to me. It's saving me some of the time. I can jump right in and already have a good baseline understanding of what's gone on behind the scenes. Um, I can see what usernames might have been affected. I can see you know, external IP addresses that maybe have been involved throughout this chain of alerts. Um, I've got my key information. I've got also you know, what were the various alerts within the Devo SIM platform that were triggered and kind of correlated into this case. Um, I can see my deep trace investigation that we'll come back to. But I can also see a bunch of context around you know, why a case was even created in the first place. Um, in this case, this case was created because there was alerts that were correlated across four or more assets in my environment. Um, so that's a customizable kind of threshold bar that I can set for, again, helping an analyst immediately filter out alerts that aren't important, aren't high priority. Um, what I think is really powerful is I can also get some context around maybe why a case might not have been created given the scenarios. And in this case, I can see no an individual alert risk score was exceeded our case creation threshold. So again, going back to shifting that focus from an individual alert, none of the 11 individual alerts in this case would have been deemed important enough to be committed to a case on their own. But in combination, they exceed that threshold to create a case. Um, down here, I can see some additional context around the alerts uh, for this particular case, for this particular attack. Um, again, I can see that we've got some discovery alerts firing where you know, we've got a machine that's looking to get access and see kind of what other information, other machines it can get to. Um, we've got some login alerts for failed logins and simultaneous logins. Um, we've got this who am I uh, execution looking to understand the permission. So things that individually might not tell me a lot, but in combination start to give me some of that context, some of that picture around this attack. Uh, I promise we come back here. So this deep trace investigation, this is that autonomous threat investigation that's already occurred, already been created and generated automatically by the Devo AI engine. Uh, and I am sure I have been logged out of this. So I'm going to see if I'm still in here. All right, that's a good sign. We've still got Wi-Fi. Um, so I kick off to deep trace. Here I can see kind of this trace that's been created. And trace is, in essence, an attack story. Um, so this was kicked off by an individual alert from Devo. And now what DeepTrace has created is it's gone in and it's poured over 226 devices in my environment. It's gathered over 750 pieces of evidence automatically. And it's now presenting me with this attack chain view, um, this view of all of the alerts, all of the events that have happened. And so what I can see right away just in this summary view is here's that initial point of entry, right? Um, this is JCourt INTS workstation. Um, I can see some of that lateral movement to the other machines in my environment. And so the color coding here is based on the criticality. So I can see as it moved from this workstation to these various other machines in my environment. Um, I can also see this very red critical movement that it made into that secure file server. Um, so I can see right away exactly what's gone on in this attack, the communications that were made. I can see along the right side here a more detailed timeline view of this. Um, I can view you know, how it moved between these machines and the individual events within these links. Um, and like we already know has occurred, I can see the most important thing here, which is that there was a secure file copy from my file server out to this external IP address. So just in this single view, I've got a pretty good idea of what's gone on in this attack. I've already seen kind of how the pieces have played out. Um, obviously, in this case, I know that we're in significant trouble. Um, but I've got this evidence presented to me. I didn't have to go out and gather it, saving me tons of time. And again, you can imagine if this is saving this time on one event, how much is it going to scale up? Um, within this view, I think what's really powerful is we've got this timeline scroll. Um, so in addition to seeing kind of the complete attack, I can also see kind of in real time how this attack played out. Um, so I can see how, again, it got in through that double extension file into that first machine 
how it kind of moved laterally through some of those discovery um, executions, found these other machines in my environment. Uh, eventually, it reaches uh, that secure file server. It's going to get in here. It's going to start you know, moving to that machine. Again, we'll run through all of these because quite frankly, there's too many. But we can see it's looking through this. It's looking for certain files. It's pouring over the directories. And eventually, as we move to the far right here, we're going to get to that secure file copy. So in this summary view, I get that high level view of this attack. I can see exactly the, the associations, communications, the movement within my environment. and can always deep dive into these individual events. Um, I can also see the same attack kind of mapped to the MITRE attack framework. So like I said, this is our at Devos framework of how we kind of anchor ourselves from a detection, from an attack standpoint. Um, so again, I can see you know, tons of things under this command line interface. We've got that remote file copy. We've got a pseudo that was run at the very end here. And just like that previous screen, I can also view this in this timeline view as well. So I can see um, from the context of the MITRE attack framework how this attack kind of moved you know, maybe from you know, left to right across this. Again, we've got lots of lateral movement. Um, I can see we've got defense evasion at this point. Um, and we can kind of keep going. Here's where it's, again, looking through those directories for my secret recipe file all the way to, at some point over here, that remote file copy. And then it's going to kind of pseudo its way out and get out. Um, so again, I can see this mapped against the MITRE attack framework. Again, I can see just against the ones that have maybe triggered um, to kind of give me that full context against the MITRE attack framework and how this attack played out. Um, I can also get deep into the individual processes that were run on each of these critical machines. So I can see kind of in this, again, tree view exactly how this attack played out in my environment. I can see you know, from that double extension file that was run, then the lateral movement to each of these different machines in my environment. Um, eventually, we get to this SSH into that file server. Um, again, see this all played out, can dive in, can view all of the underlying information, um, can kind of dive into those individual events as well. Because we know that there was a critical additional machine here, we can see we've got kind of this other process train here on that file server. Um, and again, here's where, again, color coded for severity, I can immediately see that, that full SCP command that was run. Um, and in this case, I can see that my recipe list was exported out, grabbed, sent to this IP address, um, which again, from my perspective of the Scoville analyst, this is that big event, right? This is that big red flag. I was able to find that in a matter of seconds. Um, obviously, a matter of minutes today, a matter of seconds, if I wasn't explaining it to all of you, uh, but find that very quickly and get to that important piece of information. Um, and now that we talked about, you know, again, within kind of the full timeline view, this is where I can really get into the weeds of those individual events themselves. Um, so because this is tied back to the Devo sim, this has got all of that data information, I can dive into any of these pieces of evidence, any of this information, you can kind of see all this here. Um, again, if I'm a little more skeptical from an analyst perspective about AI, this is all tied back to my, my data engine. Right? I can go back to Devo Sim. I can run queries. I can find these events. I've got that full kind of fidelity in where this came from in my data. I can still go back, manually fact check. Um, again, because Will Smith scared me and I robot, and I don't believe this if it's created automatically. But I always have that because it's all kind of one product, one platform tied together. So, Again, that kind of takes us to where we are. So you can see that now as the analyst, this attack's already played out. But I can come in. I can quickly see exactly what happened. All of this context gathering has occurred for me. Um, but again, I can take it to that next step because of this, the full Devo product suite. right? Um, in a perfect world scenario, if we go back to our attack plan here, rather than finding out everything happened at this point, you know, maybe we want to stop it from happening after this first event, right? And so because this is tied back to our SOAR, because we have this seamless integration between Devo Sim and DeepTrace and the Devo SOAR, um, I can make that playbook, right? I can build that true kind of automated response piece. I think I've got my, my basic playbook here. Um, where now maybe I've got that automated response, right? So now I've got a playbook that's going to go in. And any time we get an alert from Devo, and let's see if I've got the right thing. So here we can see you know, those alerts. Any time I have a user in my environment that ran a double extension file execution, um, I can immediately and automatically take action on that. Um, and that action can depend on as much criteria as I need to. It can be powered based on you know, ML behavior again, but we'll stay away from AI. But it can be something simple like, hey, if this is a user that's not an admin, then yeah, let's go ahead and let's log that. Let's quarantine that device. Let's prevent that lateral movement. You know, then kick it off to an analyst and say, hey, look, this is what happened. The remediation actions have already been taken. Here's a case that shows you what's been done for you to further review. 
Um, if it's an admin user, it's a VIP user, maybe we don't want to fully lock them down, but we're going to create that case proactively. We're going to automatically alert that analyst. We're going to have all of that context and information and correlated alerts gathered automatically. We're going to have that link back to uh, the deep trace investigation. So that an analyst is going to come in, be able to see that full context, and then take the appropriate steps after that. I'll throw my last marketing slide in here. I think I still have it. Um, again, the goal here, and this is our little gimme here. This is an AI generated image, right? We're going to move from sad, frustrated SOC analysts to SOC analysts that probably aren't quite that happy, but maybe a little closer to that. Um, awesome. So again, that was, I, I wasn't going to take the full hour, but that was even a little faster for me. Um, but awesome. So with that, happy to answer any questions on this. Um, I've got a couple colleagues here that I may make them answer questions just since they get to hide in the back. Um, but happy to answer questions. We've also got a little table set up in the back where we've got a little raffle for a $100 gift card as well. So I'm um, happy to talk in more detail there as well. Uh, yes? Yeah, so with, with all of the Devo products, so we're cloud native. Um, so the actual software runs in our cloud. Um, from a deep trace perspective and some of the other things that you can have little remote agents that might live in your network. Um, but from a deep trace perspective in terms of gathering a lot of that information, it's coming directly from our SIM, which is cloud hosted. We can also obviously pull in directly from your, your EDR sources, things like that. But in terms of where all these products live, fully SaaS, so hosted on our end, scales up on our end, you don't have to worry about any of the the admin, the management, um, you get all the benefits of a true SaaS platform. Uh, where are you getting your data to train your AI? Um, like, yeah, and so the, the AI right now from a deep trace perspective um, is trained on EDR data. So it works on you know, the kind of the big three, the crowd strikes, the carbon blacks, the sentinel ones. Um, our next wave of that is to start incorporating some of the, the firewall data, um, some of the I'll call them more, again, I can't remember the acronyms, NDR, one of those DR firewall logs. Uh, but then start moving in things like you know, your cloud sources to get some of that user behavior stuff as well. Um, so pull in some of those authentication logs. So right now it's trained on EDR data, um, but that's the first of kind of many phases in terms of it being able to capture and start building out more complete attack stories on a broader range of attacks. Yeah, absolutely. And so the threat intelligence can come in in a couple of different places. Um, so it can come in kind of on the, that first phase on the Devo SIM side in terms of creating more high fidelity alerts. Um, because we have an open infrastructure from an API integration standpoint, um, a lot of our out of the box alerts leverage you know, our partnerships with Recorded Future, with Virus Total, things like that. So that's actually, that context is being built in prior to an alert even being triggered. Uh, but then it's also built into the SOAR, it's also built into Deep Trace where as these events go in, and whether the SOAR and the playbook is going out and gathering more information, or obviously deep traces running through all those questions, there's threat intelligence kind of fed in throughout that process. And a second question, if I could. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. I've got my, my VP of sales over here. I'm going to ask to cover his ears because obviously we want to say no, only use Devo for everything. But absolutely, everything is open. Um, you know, it, we, we, want you to, we want you to get the value from your data. Um, and if you can get it with Deep Trace while leveraging the SIM you have, um, that's a huge value add to us. And from our perspective, that's only going to make the rest of the Devo product suite that much more appealing. So it is open. Um, obviously, we have our preferences from the sales side, but you're not tied to it. Yes. Yeah, so I think it depends because again, like I said, there's there's AI kind of built throughout. I'd say from a deep trace perspective, we say once all of your kind of endpoint data is coming in, about 30 days to really start to understand that. Um, from things like what I'll call our behavior analytics, which is our UABA stuff, that depending on the model can be 30 days, 60 days, um, depending on exactly what types of behaviors and anomalies you're doing. Um, then for the rest of our out-of-the-box alerts, where it's again a little more what I'll call those standard detections, I mean, those are those if then, right? And those will, those will provide value on day one. Um, so there's a little bit of flexibility. I'd say 30 days is kind of our standard baseline for a lot of our AI ML power detections and um, auto automation like you saw there. Yes? Um, just curious, I've heard this from other AI, AIs having this problem. 
um, your AI learn, learns about your clients' uh, systems and networks. Uh, what what do you use to make sure that that learning isn't accidentally transmitted to other outside of the your clients? Because um, they are sending a lot of data up to your cloud, and then your cloud is you know building that in with other clients. Yeah, and so again, because of the way that we we segment that data and deploy each of these pieces to the dedicated customer environment, you don't get a lot of that cross. So even the, the UABA models that are run are going to be only run on your data. The deep trace is only going to be accessing your data. Um, so there's kind of a templated model that it starts with, and then that learning occurs only on your data. Is that, am I am understanding the correction correctly? Okay. And, you know, that would be maybe possible to put a customer clients within the, within the cu customer's uh, data center? Or? Sorry, say that one more time. For customers who need a lot, a lot of security, would, you, would it be possible to maybe you know put that that learning inside their system, their systems rather than sending it out? Or it's not something that we've done. Um, but again, from a sales perspective, I never say never. Um, so absolutely something that we could explore. I know we've we've gotten creative uh, with several things in the past. But I think from a st standard operating procedure, again, a lot of that would occur on the cloud once the data is ingested up there. Yes. Yes, yeah, so the, the trigger from a deep trace perspective um, is usually one of two things. It's an alert coming from the SIM. Um, and again, that alert can be anything. It'd be our out of the box kind of if then detections. It can be our machine learning based behavior analytics. It can also be any custom alert that you've created. Um, in essence, in the Devo SIM, when you create that alert, there's a checkbox that says, hey, this is one of the alerts that I want to kick off to automatically investigate. Um, so that's one piece of it. The other is within deep trace, and we didn't touch on it today. There's also that proactive threat hunting piece. So you can set up kind of those, those hunts in deep trace that will go back into the data. And should they find something of interest, that kind of serves as the trigger. So when you see the setup, the trigger there, um, it, it's pointing to one of those two things, whether it's an alert coming directly from the SIM or it's a threat hunt that you've configured in deep trace to be a little more proactive versus reactive to an alert. Any other questions? Yes. How do you, uh, I guess, price it out? Is it in bits per second? Is it number of users? Log so it is uh, purely data ingest. Um, so your average daily ingest across a 30-day period. Um, so we, we, again, try to give that in a way that's beneficial to you. So you factor in weekends, factor in low volume, factor in spice. So it's a 30-day average daily ingest. Um, and that's how we price everything. And then there's kind of tiers depending on how much of the Devo products we are using, but it all still kind of ties back to the amount of data you're bringing in. Yes? Does it cache internal threats where information might be going out that's not supposed to be? I don't see any reason why it couldn't. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Use, but it, it, it goes back both ways, right? It's actually cache going out as opposed to... Yes, yes, absolutely. So it's going to detect all of that and then kind of build those out. Uh, yes? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so again, part of the, what you know, again, we do, so the platform is designed to be very kind of user friendly, right? I think while everyone's, every, every aspect of the Devo platform has that advanced kind of hands to keyboard option, um, everything's also got kind of no code, point and click wizard kind of helpers. We want to obviously enable you to be able to do this, um, but we've also got teams and partners that can help kind of set that up and um, provide levels of support, whether it is to your point, maybe building out those triggers up front and letting you kind of control or you know, maintaining throughout with our partner network. So um, able to provide that support and kind of find that balance of what you need to make sure you're getting the value of the platform and the content. Yes? Um, is, is there data tagging involved? In other words, uh, if I'm a managed security service provider with multiple customers, can I seg segregate the data through tagging? Or something? Yeah, so we have... Uh, full multi-tenancy. So in terms of data segmentation, we can do that in one of two ways. We can do what I'll call kind of more of the logical segmentation. So we've got full RBAC, you know, granular down to the, the row and column level. Um, so within a single tenant, if you will, you could have that RBAC to kind of segment things out. Uh, we see a lot with our enterprise customers who want to separate the NOC from the SOC from this team and that team. Um, so you can do that with an individual domain. Uh, but then we also support full multi-tenancy. Um, so where you have each completely segmented child tenants. Uh, and those could be 
from an MSSP perspective, different customers. From an enterprise perspective, those might be different regions to abide by data residency. You've got your team in the UK, you've got your team in India, you've got your team in US, um, but then you have that parent tenant with visibility into all of those. Um, so we support that, that separation of data in both ways. Any questions from my colleagues in the back? <laughs> How much does it cost? <laughs> you got to come by the booth for that, yeah. It has, it has an amazing return on investment. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the company has been around for, I think, 13 years now. Um, so we started in Madrid, Spain, um, primarily as a, a pure log analytics at scale. Um, so we worked with a lot of the telecoms there who had you know, tens of terabytes of data they were producing a day and just, quite frankly, couldn't bring it in and, and analyze it in any other platform. So we started there um, and then kind of moved very heavily into security over the last six or seven years. And so I think the Again, not to go full sales, anyway. the, the advantage that that's given us in the space is that we've got that foundation of speed and scale that we've then built the security side on top of, as opposed to some of the others who may have really had come to the market with great security offerings, but struggled to scale to some of those data needs. Awesome. Yes? As far as integration, do you have a, like a marketplace for integration where folks can contribute to it, or how, how does that work? Yeah, so we've got kind of that community aspect in a couple of different ways. So from a content perspective, we've got what we call our Devo Exchange, which I'll, I'll call it a marketplace, but I air quote it because there, there's no feed any of that content. It's free to use for any of our users. Um, so that's where alerts, active boards, applications, all of that content that our internal teams produce, our customers, our tech partners produce is all made available to all of our users there. Um, and then we've also got a very active user community as well. Um, so sharing of best practices, asking questions of each other, of the Devo team, um, really trying to foster kind of that community pillar of the autonomous SOC to get that expertise from you know, anywhere it may lay. Uh, might be a sales question. So there's a lot of other products that kind of um, claim to do the same thing, right? But it's really a bunch of correlation rules, <coughs> playbooks. Uh, they could use SOAR, they do automated responses, that kind of thing. You do build into it. <coughs> I guess at what point in your product does all of that stop and it becomes actual AI? Or the AI is doing the decision making? Yeah, and so I think that's one of the, the powerful things from our SOAR perspective. Um, and so our SOAR is a recent addition to our product suite. It came from an acquisition. The first portion of last year, um, much like every SIM, we're out acquiring. Everyone's out there acquiring SOAR. So we've, again, we've got to get all the fun acronyms. And so one of the things that drew us to this particular SOAR is that they combine that traditional, what I'll call the automated response if this happens, take these steps, with what's called decision automation. Um, and so what it does, again, it's still a playbook, you're still setting it up, but it replicates some of that decision thought process that the analysts are taking. Um, so an alert or an event might fire, and instead of immediately taking actions, it's gonna grab information and kick it off for additional context from, again, I'll use virus total as an example. Uh, you know, in a phishing example, it might grab the body of the email and run that through one API, the attachments through another, the URLs through another, look for keywords, gather all of that context automatically. Each of those individual pieces might have a risk score associated with it, um, and then have kind of the, the rules or even an algorithm in some cases of how to kind of take those different risk scores and combine that into a single kind of final risk value. And then that becomes either a tool in the analyst tool belt to decide what to do, or that's what kicks off then the automated response piece. Hey, if this is a, a phishing email that we've got, it has a low risk, we're not really concerned about it, we're gonna put it on a watch list, but we're not gonna take any actions, we're gonna close this one out. Um, on the flip side, if it's a high risk, you know, we've got a risk score of nine out of 10, we're pretty confident this is a malicious kind of phishing attempt. We're going to take these automated steps, right? Maybe we're quarantining the machine. Maybe we're blocking that address. Um, you know, we're kicking off full automated responses. And maybe even that case is still closing out the case because it's been resolved. Um, and then where I think where the power comes in is that middle step, that augmented analyst, right? Something in that three to seven, three to eight range where, again, this is the sweet spot for the human analyst, right? This is where there's a lot more critical thinking that goes in. So what's happening in that case is all that context, kind of like we saw, all that context being presented to the analyst. Cases being created. Maybe you've even got those automated tasks teed up where an analyst can come in, review that, um, and then maybe kick off those automated tasks, do additional evidence gathering, whatever it might be. So I think that's one area where we're seeing AI maybe not serve as the full end-to-end -end solution, but again, really about that augmented analyst workflow. I heard you say um, client uh, agent-based uh, 
um, in a case like uh, uh, serverless computing uh, Lambda, are there any gaps? From a data ingestion standpoint or from this autonomous investigation piece? Yeah, so in terms of getting that data in, absolutely not. So, you know, like I said, from where we started, we're able to bring in data from any source because we've got a very flexible ingestion and we really have alleviated and eliminated a lot of the traditional requirements of getting data in. Um, I, I don't want to get too deep into it, but unlike some of the other ways, we don't, we don't parse on ingest, we don't index on ingest. We take, remove some of those barriers, or we're just bringing data in in its raw format. As long as it's sent securely and we know where it's coming from, it's going to get into the platform. So in terms of bringing in data from a Lambda function, from a Kinesis Firehouse, wherever it might be, um, all of that's fully supported in the platform. Um, then once that data's in, then it's fully set up for all of the automation, all of the analytics, all of the AI that it you know, can leverage that's built on that data. You must do some sort of data translate. You convert it to Parquet format or something? So we store it in that raw, untransformed format, but then we are parsed on query. Um, so when you do go to query that data, it'll be parsed out. Um, so you have kind of those fields again, because you think about it, the parsing of the data is done for the human, not for the machine, right? Um, so it's going to be parsed out, and with that, then we've got um, you know a lot of data normalization, right? So a, a good example is what we call union tables, where instead of going in and viewing, okay, here's my traffic logs from Palo Alto, and those are fully separate from my traffic logs from Cisco or Juniper, wherever it might be. Um, we've got this idea of union tables. It's going to take all of those firewall logs from 70 different sources and present them in a single view with a single standardized schema. And so we do a lot of that out of the box, but also give you the tools to kind of create your own custom normalized views as well. Um, so while we're not manipulating the data, we want it to remain that single source of truth as it was created at the source. When you actually go to view that data and build content on it, you have free reign to kind of manipulate, transform it, parse it, use our parsers, parse it how you want to, normalize it, whatever you need to do. All right. Well, thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Appreciate the questions. And like I said, we'll be back there to unpack some more.